Right. I now call to order the new Carlisle City Council's meeting for their City Town Hall, March 11, 2019, at 6.30 p.m., Mrs. Berner. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Shiamy. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Six members present. I'm going to test you all to mind rising for our invocation. Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, we thank you for allow allowing us to meet here. Father God, Lord, continue to let our city to grow and expand and continue to reach uh, for its highest heights that we've seen in uh, many, many years. Father God, let this council continue to work together, Lord. Let the public continue to hold us to account, Father God. And Lord, just let this city continue to grow. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Pleasure to back. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alrighty. There are, are no minutes tonight, communications none, city manager report none, comments <coughs> from members of the public, please <coughs> limit comments to five minutes or less. Hearing none. Committee reports none. Mrs. Berner. Okay. Tonight we have one resolution, resolution 19-06R, introduction, public hearing and action tonight. A resolution accepting the amended 2019 official certificate of estimated resources. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. I move to accept resolution 19-06R. Second. Good. Second. For sure. Okay. Yep. An explanation of this resolution, it's a housekeeping resolution. Um, every time that our estimated resources would change, we have to uh, recertify that with our council and then retake that up to the uh, auditor's office. And that's what's before council tonight. <coughs> council, any discussion? No, nope. Mrs. Berner. Okay, Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Accepted 6 0. Fantastic. Ordinances, Mrs. Burr. Okay, moving on to ordinances. We have Ordinance 19 04. Public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance to establish appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures of the City of New Carlisle, State of Ohio, during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2019. Council? Make a motion to accept. Second. An explanation of this ordinance. This is our yearly ordinance we do for our annual appropriations. This happens to be for our 2019 annual appropriations. Uh, just a disclaimer, if anyone's noticing a different format with how we submitted our budget this year for approval with council, it's a little <coughs> bit more line itemy, and that is a recommendation from our auditors to improve our state audits. Council, any questions? Okay. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Motion accepted 6 0. Yeah. Moving on to Ordinance 19 05, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on March 18, 2019. An ordinance to authorize the city manager to renew a contract with Elizabeth Township, Miami County, for the purpose of providing fire and emergency service to a portion of the township. Thank you. Uh, other business is our town hall. We will now enter into, into the department section. Uh, I want to thank you all for coming out tonight. It's our annual town hall, which is more or less like a state of the state address or state of the union for our city. And uh, Mr. Bridge and our uh, services staff and the council will have some updates for everyone. Mr. Bridge. Uh, thank you, Mayor Reynolds, Mayor Reynolds uh, members of city council and administration, guests in the audience this evening. Thank you for attending our annual town hall meeting. It has been a pleasure serving as your city manager for nearly four years now. Uh, the city has progressed over this very short period of time. Our finances have vastly improved. Two of our enterprise funds are, are, are undergoing overdue capital improvements. We continue to update our parks with new playground equipment, 
our roads are still being repaired at a steady pace. And our fire, fire and EMS division now have the funds to invest <coughs> in operational, now have the funds to address, uh, uh, invest in operational equipment and personnel. Improvements like these do not magically occur. To the citizens of New Carlisle, I thank you for your continued support. From the passage of the police levy, the street levy, and the fire and EMS levy, and who can forget the defeat of the income tax credit of 2017. You know one can derive many things from this voting history, but notice, but most notably to me, what I derive is that not only do our New Carlisle residents want the best possible place to live, but they also have taken notice of these numerous citywide improvements too. To my right are the remaining city administrators. Each directly oversee entire city departments and are extremely valuable to myself and to this organization. They, ex they execute mine and council's vision for the city nearly flawlessly. They work long and sometimes awkward hours, which often go unnoticed. <clears throat> I hope they understand how much I truly respect each of them. Here shortly, they will also be speaking to their 2018 department successes. To the remaining city staff not in attendance, all of you are the true backbone to city operations. We administrators are thankful for your dedication, professionalism, and knowledge in your positions. Please know that we value and appreciate your work ethics and your friendship. The purpose of this annual town hall meeting is to reflect on the prior year. In that case, that would be 2018. We all understand that 2018 was a challenging year in many different ways. But regardless of those dark spots, we did shine bright in many areas as follows. The city renewed its 2018 contract for liability insurance very late in 2017. With, with receiving no reduction of coverage, the city has saved an approximately 16,210 and 18 alone from the lack of reduction of premium, premium charges. These uh, savings have attributed to many factors, but namely reduction in claims sent over the past few years and great business relationship in place between the city administration and the city's liability insurance representative. From 2017 to 2018 fiscal year ends, the city experienced an approximate 140% increase in investment earnings. By increasing our deposits with Star Ohio in 2018, the city receded $32,431 in interest earnings, compared to $13,541 in 2017. Factually, since taking over as city manager in 2015, we have increased our investment earnings over 9,000% when we receded only $354 in 2015, compared to the $32,341 I just mentioned. The city also began to receive our fire and, fire, and e fire and EMS dispatching services via the Sheriff's Office. This did occur in 2017, but due to this move, in 2018, the city saved an approximately $15,000. We are excited for this opportunity presented itself, and we will continue to monitor the service for improvements and even more cost savings in the future if, the, if it should present itself. In November, Ordinance 1830-E was approved by City Council that gave me the authority to switch our natural gas supplier from Vector Energy to IGS Energy. This move presented the city with a fixed variable rate of $4.62 per MCF, opposed to a variable market-based rate. This will equate to approximately $7,000 in annual savings. That contract ends December 2021. When reflecting on 2018, many topics continued to pop into my thoughts. First and foremost were the events created in 2018 that directly benefited our citizens and were created as such to give just a little back after supporting this great city during some of our most troubled times. On the evening of June 30th, the city of New Carlisle presented a big boom thank you which was an overly successful evening of extended pool hours, food trucks, great company, and fireworks. To City Council, what a great event that you all suggested and that we have, and I look forward to even a bigger event and better show this year. Another event created that debuted in 2018 was the Community Shredding Event. That enabled a partnership with the City, with the city of New Carlisle and New Carlisle <coughs> Federal Savings Bank. 
This event was useful for our citizens because it offered them a secure way to dispose of personal and confidential paper materials. And we look forward to continuing this event yearly for our residents. The cities also began accepting online bill pay in February. This service makes paying water sewer bills more convenient for our residents and also permits them to create an online account that has great additional features. We have also continued to improve our city parks with the addition of the new Unity Dome right outside the shelter house, as well as a bike repair station that can be used for minor bike repairs. These new additions were a result of a collaboration between the City of New Carlisle, the Clark County Combined Health District, and Creating Healthy Communities Grant. We will again be collaborating in 2019 on this effort. As your city manager, I will, I will, look, I will continue to look <coughs> for innovative ways to save your tax dollars while still increasing services and events in 2019. This, of course, will not be done alone. To revisit an earlier statement, to the right of me are the remaining city administrators. Mr. Howard Kiko, our Director of Public Service, has over 19 years of work history with this city. He will speak about the 2018 successes of his departments here momentarily. Ms. Debbie Watson, our Finance Director, was hired in June of 2018 and has been an absolute wonderful addition to this administrative team. <coughs> he will also speak momentarily to review the financial highlights of 2018. Mr. Steve Trusty is our fire chief and has been over the past few years. He will be speaking here shortly to discuss his department's 2018 highlights and 2019 capital purchases. <clears throat> and lastly, but definitely not least, Deputy Rachel, Rachel Allender uh, is here to answer any questions you may have. So without further ado, I would like to start introducing the administration and we'll follow the uh, agenda here. So we will start with our finance director, Ms. Debbie. Watson. Hi, good evening, Council and residents. It's always nice to see a full house when we have meetings. You know that our residents are interested in what's going on. Um, since uh, Randy said that I only started in June, so I basically have a summary of what's happened since I've kind of been here and for the year. Um, so my report's not as detailed because I wasn't here half the year, but we can start with our total revenue received. If you um, we estimated to receive $5,460,188.38, but we actually received $6,886,937.72. So that's always good to know. We took, brought in a little more money. And the better thing is that our total expenses, our approved budget was for $6,174,256.75. And we only spent $6,169,298.99. So that's also very good to know that we cut, cut areas so we could save some more money. And then if you look, um, our general fund ending balance for the years um, has considerably been going up each year. <coughs> this year we ended with a balance of $949,285 in the general fund. So that's... That's a plus for the year. Um, let me think what else. So one of the biggest changes in the finance department this year was uh, they upgraded their software system to um, the VIP. Um, we are still working on fine tuning everything, uh, but once that is complete, we are very excited about the reporting uh, capabilities that we'll bring to help bring more detail to what we can report back to the council and to the citizens. Um, our job in the finance department is to be efficient and detailed in keeping all records of expenditures and revenues. It is to ensure fiscal responsibility and to keep the city of New Carlisle financially stable. And we are here to help the citizens with any questions they may have. I'm very proud of the team that I work with. I'm glad to be here in New Carlisle. And if you should have any questions, feel free. Ms. Watson, do you mind if we ask you some questions about the financial report? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Ms. Watson, I just wanted you, you went over your report, and thank you. Uh, would you go ahead and read over the uh, first block there, the uh, pay a white block, over the general fund ending balances from 2014 to 18? You want me to read over them? Yeah, if you don't mind, sure. just because I think it'd be important for the audience to hear it. Absolutely. So in 2014, our, the general fund balance of the city was 52,000, I mean 442,000. In 2015, it was $189,320. In 2016, it was $1,000,000. In 2017, it was $1,000,000. In 2018, it was $1,000,000. In 2019, it was $1,000,000. In 2020, it was $1,000,000. In 2021, it was $1,000,000. In 2022, it
In 2016, it went up to $523,980. In 17, it went up to $829,667. And then for 18, it was $949,285. Great, thank you. I, You're welcome. I just want to make sure everybody had heard that. So. <laughs> Council, any other questions for Mrs. Watson? Hearing none, Mr. Fritch. And uh, moving on with the town hall report, our director of public service, Mr. Howard Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, members of the council, members of the public. I would just like to start off a little bit with telling you um, all the personnel that uh, work with me that try to keep things going in the city. Uh, you know, we have three major departments, the public works department, the water works, and the wastewater. Public works consists of your streets, your parks, your cemetery, and your vehicle maintenance. Granted, it's not a department, but uh, there's enough going on there that the one of the four people, including the ce uh, cemetery superintendent of Greg Slattery, has to pull off there um, to do vehicles. It only leaves us three, plus we usually have one or two at the cemetery. So you can see when we get into big projects such as dirt patching and things like that, um, that can really slow us down. Um, and from my understanding, through the budget this year, we will be getting an extra seasonal, so that should really help get some of the uh, cleanliness, uh, the grass being mowed, keep, keeping that up and looking nice. Um, Waterworks is Superintendent uh, Bob Hoke. He oversees two full-time employees. So we have three total in the water department. And for instance, on some of the things you might see them out doing is curb valves for the digging in the curb lawn. Typically have three people on that job. Um, so if we have all three doing a curb valve, I have nobody in the water department to do any kind of thing. So um, Kathy Marshall is up usually scheduling. We'll work the schedule for them to do turn on, turn offs, um, any kind of other uh, work that might need to be done. If we get into main breaks, seeing us digging in the middle of the street, um, we require um, four personnel. Uh, we require four personnel for main breaks. And one is it's that added safety because we already have, know that we have possible cave-ins, we have water gushing. And typically, that is the mechanic who will come out of the public works department um, and help assist the water department. So they'll, again, departments are sharing. And then when we get into fire hydrants, you'll typically see four people there or more. Multiple vehicles, back hose, back truck. So there can be a lot of busy things going on. Uh, wastewater, uh, that is headed by the superintendent, Harvey Simmons. And uh, we currently have three full-time employees under Harvey. And every one of uh, the, well, I take it back, three of the four are class three wastewater operators. And we have one that is a class two wastewater operator. So we have a pretty experienced staff down there. And typically what you'll see them doing, for the most part, if they're not on the plant grounds, is they're out sewer jetting. That is probably their major thing, is keeping the sewer lines <coughs> clean, inspection. We also maintain the Northwestern Local School District, Northampton, and various places in between there. So we do have to travel multiple times during a week up to a lift station that we have in Northampton. So you can take round trip time out of that just to go do inspections. It can take a lot of time away from our plant functions. So um, I'll get into 2018. Uh, we had completed uh, some asphalt overlay project in conjunction with the Clark County Roadway contract. And that project including overlaying Chestnut, Firwood, Greenheart, and White Pine Streets. The total cost uh, for this project was 184500 I'm sorry, $184,535.31. Uh, all of that money came from the street levy fund, for the, from the street levy tax. Uh, Scarf Road Water Tower Project started in 2018. The tower received a new exterior coating and an installation of a mixing device and OSHA safety upgrades. Safety upgrades included sealing off some of the lid holes, um, having the new ladder that uh, when you put the don the safety device, you can climb that tower safely with, with the proper equipment. Uh, we actually had some uh, companies who would not uh, go and inspect our tower because we did not have the proper uh, devices. So we are good with that now. The mixing device that it was installed is that tower currently because of our Adams tower being a little bit is still in service does not get uh, a ton of turnover uh, it's so big water actually only moves like six inches in the water so we installed a mixer which basically is a like a camera tripod and it is a much bigger net camera it just looks like a tulip a rose or a tulip at the top that spins and then keeps the water mixed up 
It helps with chlorine distribution, helps keep the water fresh from everything that comes into the tower and allows fresh water to go back out. So with that being said, in 2020, we will begin the interior recoding portion of that uh, project. Our annual payments are $115,500 and those will go until 2024. And just to update, remember that this tower, basically we own that tower, but anything that happens with that tower right now is under the, the utility agency that took that tower over right now. So if they come in for an inspection, which will be coming up this spring, summer, and they find that, hey, that interior uh, went bad a little quicker than what we thought, they'll go ahead and do the interior this year. So it's completely on their schedule when they want to save the most money and not create a headache for them. Uh, an update on the road de-icing salt. We have used so far this year 150 tons, which is about 25 tons more than last year. Uh, again, we normally bid about 300, and we will still by June, I think it is, we will have to still go pick up, I think it's another 40 or 80 tons, somewhere in there. I haven't got the calculation done, but we have a minimum we need to buy this year. And so far, we do have the storage uh, for it. Um, what's coming up for 2019? Uh, we're approved for reconstruction of 300 block of Gilwood Drive. That is happening this year. Uh, actually, it is at the county with the plans, and they will be putting that out for bid here um, shortly. That project will be funded by CDBG Critical Infrastructure Grant and City Street Levy Fund. The construction cost estimate is $380,078, with New Carlisle contributing about $60,400, and that is $19,000 for engineering and $41,400 for our share of that project. Uh, I am currently budgeting for to overlay Bittersweet, Butternut, and Hemlock Streets through the Clark County Engineer's Office, just like we did this last year. The goal is to get those three short, street, uh, three short streets done this year so we can move on and start getting the rest of the city uh, finished up. Wastewater treatment plant influent upgrade project. Uh, the pump is due here April 12th. Hopefully it stays on schedule. We can get that installed. And, the and that includes replacement of both raw influent pumps and the mechanical bar screen. The estimate cost for engineering and construction is around 500000 And we are increasing our efforts to improve the appearance of the city, as always, for everything. Street sign, clean up, uh, straightening, um, you name it. We're going to do what we can to keep the grass definitely cut up this year, trash picked up, that type of thing. Last thing, and we try to put this out a lot um, via social media, is sewer flushable or just flushable wipes uh, you go to the grocery store uh, for instance diaper wipes face cleaning wipes anything that looks like a towel that comes pre-moisturized they say flushable okay technically it's flushable it'll go down the toilet however that uh, clogs up our well not operating bar screen but it will clog up our bar screen when we get it it gets into pumps i mean like anything it's a cloth so we asked that anything like blue paper towels you get regular paper towels napkins those wipes, uh, do not flush those down, put those in the trash can and it will save uh, us at the city for our wastewater treatment um, a ton of money. And actually it's more in labor because we don't have to tear those pumps down as often. Uh, if not weekly, we are constantly flushing out the pump portion of a, uh, of a pump to clean these rags out. So, but that is all I have. Um, I can answer any questions, comments for the year or what we have upcoming. Council. Okay. Mr. Kitko, I had a <clears throat> citizen ask me what the thoughts are on the old water tower. Is this to be torn down or? That, that is the plan still. Uh, we are trying to get um, a lot of things, get our ducks in a row before <coughs> we do it. Hydraulic study, I've been working with engineers to try and do this without costing a lot of money. Because um, the Ohio EPA would like an engineer stamp it says, yes, th this is a thing that you are, you've done the proper procedures to get that uh, removed. So that is the goal. Um, that old tower is only 125,000 gallons when our other tower is 1.7 million. So it really does not do a whole lot for us at this point, um, but we have a few things to make sure that that's the case. Would you project a timeline, just a ballpark, of when that'll come down? I was hoping it was last year, to be honest with you. However, <laughs> things keep getting backed up with other things that are coming down at the water plant, things we're having to fix. So we've been able, we've had to reallocate some funds to fix some <clears throat> more emergency items that have come about. 
Um, so I'm hoping within the next couple years for sure. Mr. <coughs> Lindsay. Mr. Kirko, uh, what will the estimated cost be to take down that scarf tower? It's around, uh, we were That's quoted between 35,000 and 50. Pardon me? Between 35 <coughs> and 50,000. And then they're going to scrap it out? Or? That's where they're getting a lot okay. of their, the rest of their uh, payment, yes. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Lowry. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor. Mr. Kiko, could you, this is a, a loaded question, but I'm going to ask anyway, just out of curiosity, since it's the meat this morning. <coughs> our overall water, the way we process it, how would you, like, rank the way our water is processed and, you know, the quality of it in comparison to maybe other cities? I mean, I've talked to some of the water guys, and they, they've said that, in their opinion, the way that the water's processed, that it's, you know, it's pretty up there as far as quality. I mean, can you answer anything on that? I mean, we don't have the, our water is excellent uh, as compared to others. We do have a simple process. And the reason that is, is we're in glacial till. We have wells. We don't have to pump water from a creek, river, stream, nothing like that, where you have um, oils, spills, it can really uh, put a hurting on it. Like city of Cincinnati, they are hourly reviewing the river, Ohio River for stuff like that. Wow. Uh, treatment, very simple treatment process. Um, we don't have to do a whole lot, you know, to keep our water clear. Uh, we try to keep an eye on it, but, you know, it just depends. Uh, really, we're, everything is pretty reasonable in our water treatment plant, except for pumping. We pump a lot, but yeah. that's the design that we were brought with, with the type of water we have in the ground. But, you know, we have, we have great water. I've heard before, don't know for a fact, that we were, our water was taken to a taste test years ago that it was like top three or something like that. Really? Okay. Along with the city of Dayton, I think they've won an award too. Okay, great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You got something else? No, nope. thank you. You're welcome. Ready? Yeah. Mr. Rich. And moving on with the uh, town hall report, we have our fire, admit, uh, fire chief, chief trustee. Mayor, vice mayor, council and citizens. Uh, in the year of 2018, New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 1,100 EMS calls, 112 fire-related calls, excuse me, 112 EMS calls in, in Elizabeth Township, uh, 1,100 in the city. The division responded to 201 fire-related calls in the city and 32 in Elizabeth Township. Our call volume has increased this year over last year. Um, that's just the way it goes. Every year can be different. It fluctuates. The fire division received this year $28,331 in grant money. Uh, two different grants. The first grant was the hood and glove grant. We received $24,000 from the workman's comp. Uh, that was for fire, fire gloves and fire, uh, the Numex <coughs> that the firefighters wear. Uh, reason being is for a big push with workman's comp to curtail cancer causing agents with the firefighters. This allows them to swap out those hoods after each call, that way they're cleaned and washed and sanitized before they, can wear, before they wear them again. Uh, so that was a big plus for us, because that's a lot of money. As you can see, that $24,000 bought 142 pairs of gloves and 79 hoods. So they're, they're expensive. Uh, we also received $4,331 for a reimbursable EMS grant for supplies. Basically what that grant does, we, we purchase what we want to spend up to that amount, and then the state reimburses us back through the uh, EMS Commission. Uh, as, Mr. as Mr. Bridge also already uh, spoke about the dispatch uh, switch, where we switched to the county as of the 1st of January uh, for our dispatching services. That also, like he said, gave us a $15,000 savings. One of the other big pluses that also gave us this year was when the county decided to and to switch completely to MARC systems, uh, we, were, we will be receiving this year $96,000 worth of radio equipment free uh, from the county. Also on January 1st, we moved completely into the MARC system, uh, which allows us to have better radio communications, and not only with ourselves, but also radio communications with mutual aid departments. We can now talk to uh, Bethel Clark, Bethel Miami, um, all the surrounding departments with, without having to have two or three different radios in your hand. They can just switch from one, one channel to the other, which was a big, big help for us. Uh, the biggest thing, with the deepest thanks to the citizens of New Carlisle that passed our three mil levy, which will allow us, the division, to move forward this year in purchasing a new medic. 
and also we'll be able to raise the wages of our firefighters, which will also put us in more of a competitive field with the other departments in the area to hire people. Uh, we've already started receiving more applications because people knowing that our salaries are going to go up, which is a big plus for us. Uh, working with the area departments, we have a lot of people that work both sides of the fence for us and Bethel Clark and other departments, and it makes a bit, it helps a lot with all of that. Um, the division is moving forward. We've hired five new personnel this year. Uh, it takes a while for us to get them on the street, get them trained, because they have to go through a training process with us. Um, but things are moving forward. The division is, is growing. Uh, the morale in the station is very high. Uh, things are moving in the way we want them to. Uh, myself and the two, I usually just see me here, but I have two outstanding uh, assistant chiefs, Assistant Chief Rick Ritter, who's been with the department for 45 years. And I also have an Assistant Chief uh, Anthony Cooper, who's been with the division for 15 years. Uh, between the three of us and our other staff officers, we are constantly working to improve things. And also, we have our own five-year plan that we're looking at, where we'd like to be in five years with the division. So things are moving forward, and a lot of good things that we're hoping for in the future. Um, on a personal note, the good Lord blessed me and my wife to be able to purchase a home. So by June, July, we will be living in the city of New Carlisle. Welcome. In, any questions? <clears throat> Council, any questions? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. Chief, congratulations <coughs> on your purchase. And uh, do you have any idea uh, when the new medic will be spec'd out? And it's, being, it's being spec'd as we talk, okay. as, as we talk right now. It's being spec'd. It's a process uh, to spec out what we feel we need and also what we can afford. Um, and then putting that out to two or three different makers, and then to see what the best buy we get back from that. Okay. Any idea of the timeline that, that may be ordered? No. Two, it'll three months for it? It'll, it'll be few, probably three, probably say two to, two to three months before we actually order it. Yeah. And if we don't buy, say, per se, buy a demo medic that's already built and it happens to have what we want on it, then that medic has to be built for us. Okay. Thank you, sir. Council, any other questions for the chief? Thank you, Chief Trustee. <coughs> and uh, lastly, but definitely not least, um, we did have a short change of plans. Uh, Sergeant Underwood was unable to make it. Um, so Deputy Allender is here to answer any questions that you may have. Um, and if not, we'll, have, we'll get a copy of the report later and send it on out. Council, any questions for Deputy Allender? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lauer. Uh, Deputy Allender, just can you give me, uh, if you don't mind, just kind of a quick rundown of how you think 2018 went? Things got better, or worse? Um. Um, I, I do. I think that things that things did get better. We got a lot of new equipment, um, some from the city and some from the county. I know that we in 2018 had a new cruiser, which was very nice to have. One of the SUVs. Um, the county, through a grant, provided all the deputies with the outer carriers that you now see us wear. Um, it's basically the vest outside of the shirt. It allows us to get some of the equipment off of our belt and up on um, on our vests. It has, um, you know, scientifically proven, medically proven that it um, helps with back problems and things like that that law enforcement officers are typically complaining of. I think that that grant was um, a part of kind of some of the chief trustees to the workman's comp, that they helped the county out with that. But that was at no expense of the city. Um, 2018, we got two new patrol bikes. Um, the bikes that we had previously were about 15 years old at least. Um, those bikes were equipped with lights and sirens. Um, Deputy Gonzalez last year completed a uh, bike school. So even though Deputy Cruz left us last year, we do now still have two certified bike patrol deputies, including him and myself. Um, let's see, just some of the events that the deputies were involved in last year, just to name a few of them. Um, the fireworks, the Heritage Flight Festival, um, Christmas tree lighting, National Night Out were some of the events we were able to get involved with. Um, with that being said, you know, I encourage anybody who has an event within the city that you want a deputy present. Um, just let us know. We'll be happy to stop out and, and make, a, uh, make ourselves seen and, um, you know, speak with people out there. Um, of course, like I mentioned, Deputy Cruz left in 2018. Um, deputy Moody and Deputy Liming um, joined the New Carlisle team. With that being said, we are losing depth of line in this year with, um, you know, <coughs> coming on. And um, 
that's really the, the main things I think for 2018 that I had. Great. Thank you very much. You're Sounds welcome. great. Council, any other questions for Deputy Allender? Well, thank you, Deputy Allender. All right. Uh, any audience questions and comments, please limit to five minutes less for city administration and staff. Peggy Eggleston, 312 South Main. I guess I could have said this at either the meeting, uh, the other meeting also. Um, I have a question for council and particularly Mr. Lindsay and Mr. Reynolds. I recently reached out to a couple of the council members asking about the possibility of having a meet the candidates for our upcoming special election. While both members I spoke to thought it was a good idea, I was told that some council members felt that they should stay out of it. I took this to mean that after the mess with the appointment that the council was going to stay neutral and let the voters decide. I may be wrong. I was also told that this type of thing is usually set up by an outside source. So I've reached out to several people hoping that something can be set up. I, for one, would like to hear from both candidates as to what they would like to see for our city and if they think, if they can think, speak, and act independently for themselves and for the betterment of the city. I can't stress how important the importance of the citizens' rights to know the candidates, and without a meeting, we'll know what they stand for. Now, gentlemen, you have the right to vote and support for anyone you like. However, I have information of both of you going door to door to get signatures for Ms. Hopkins' petition to run for council. And Mr. Lindsay, I have documentation of you contacting people stating that you would like to put campaign signs for her in their yards and that you are backing her. How is this considered council staying out of it? I have nothing against Ms. Hopkins. I don't know her. And I do hope that the best person for the city is elected. However, if the actions speak louder than words, and you have said that council needs to stay out of it, yet your actions don't show that. Can you explain it? The council cannot hold a candidate night. That has always been done. <clears throat> by a third party, to the best of my knowledge. I know it was done in 15, I think, by Tecumseh. Tecumseh's Teacher Teachers Association. Teachers Association or Association. something, they did it. Yeah. The, uh, that is not a function <coughs> or a position of council to uh, hold a candidate's night for these candidates or any other candidates. And as far as me putting signs up or asking people, I can do whatever I want when I'm not sitting up here. That has nothing, that does not reflect on council because I know there's council members up here supporting Mrs. McKenzie also. May I ask a point of clarification? Go ahead. Where does the state that council cannot hold a candidate's night in order to give our citizens the right to hear what each candidate has to say. I know you all are aware that I asked you if you wanted to hold a candidate's night, and I think you all know what you responded, but I am totally astounded when you say that council cannot do this. Council is not favoring any candidate all we are doing is giving the citizens of this city who have a right to vote and who voted to put you on this position <clears throat> and you turned them down to not give them the opportunity. I have made several contacts also to find out if there were anybody willing to hold a candidate tonight and I still have not heard from anybody that wanted to, to do this. You know, as far as I'm concerned, we were elected to provide this community with the best city that we can. <clears throat> and when we stop the citizens from getting information, then I feel like we're not doing the job that we were elected to do. 
I just take what well, I just agreed with Mr. Lowry on his point of not having <coughs> posting it because it's never been done in the past. And so I just I agreed with Mr. Lowry's point of not having council host it, but I feel I feel totally supportive of any other organization that would want to do so. Mr. Lowry. Mr. Mayor, on, on Mr. Lindsay's and Mr. Cook's comments, I mean, do you know for sure or have you ever checked into it? Are we legally allowed to? I mean, because I don't know. I mean, regardless of we, whether we legally can or can, I was against it. There is nothing in the charter. Okay. And as far as I know, I don't know that there's anything in the Ohio Revised Code. When you set up a candidate's night, you are not, I guess the word is endorsing, any candidate. All you're doing is giving the citizens the opportunity to hear the candidates, what questions come out of the audience, so be it. But I, I'm having a very tough time trying to understand where council is one-sided on the issue. Uh, for me, I, you know, I think when you written your email and correct me if i'm wrong i'm not 100 percent sure i thought you'd said maybe during a council meeting didn't you okay so th that was one of the things that threw me off right then and there okay. um if you know if you if council wants to talk about doing it at a side meeting whether it's i don't you know what maybe legal council thinks outside of a city building whether you know someone from council sets it up at you know the elementary school with their stage or something of that nature i'm fine with that i wasn't i did not like the idea of having it set up part of a council meeting that was my that was my big issue right then and there i don't know whether i said council I, meeting or a town hall meeting maybe I, my my first thought was to have it as a part of this meeting when we would have a fairly decent crowd audience right Council, anything else? No? Moving on. So, council members' comments, <coughs> Mr. Cook. 2018 was a quote unquote tumultuous situation for the city. I think you're all aware of the good points. And the good points is the administration <clears throat> got us to where we are. Without those people working as hard as they did, I don't believe we would have ended up with the amount of money as a balance that we have done. We did a lot of good things. And I go back to the fireworks as being one of them. And Mr. Cobb worked awfully hard on that even though he didn't get to see them, he was transported in the ambulance that night with another one of his spells. Again, this year we'll put that on. We've got one citizen that contributed a fairly substantial amount of money to help us in that. Mr. Lowry and his group are stepping up to assist us with the fireworks and consequently I think this year if we can get our act together perhaps we'll make it a decent year for the citizens of this town Mr. <coughs> well just what uh, Councilman Cook was saying uh, on top of that I look as 2019 to be a little bit more successful than 2018 and i'm looking forward to working with each and every one of you and i would like to thank the administration and my fellow council members uh we can we can move the city in the right direction i truly believe that short and sweet all right mr lowry thank you sir um, I'll just go over a couple of quick things. Um, I'm a horrible public speaker, so I'll probably be <clears throat> around a little bit. But, uh, you know, I mean, Randy hit on a lot, of, administration hit on a lot of high notes. I mean, there were some blemishes on the city's face, if you will, in 2018. But, you know, not that I say those aren't important to pay attention to, you know, when things like that do happen. But, you know, I try to look at the bigger picture and the more positive information that moves uh, our city forward. 
uh, you know, again, with Deb's finance report, but, you know, the general fund ending balance, I mean, that's, I mean, that's just astonishing to see the, the, the numbers climbing like that. Um, and, you know, you, you got to thank council to a, to a degree on that, but you, you've got to hand it to, to Randy and his team for sure. And, and probably most importantly, the taxpayers who voted to pass uh, that half percent income tax. I mean, that was a huge chunk of it. Uh, but on top of that, you know, Randy is, you know, I was not taking anything away from past city managers, but Bob Bender was always one of my favorite city managers. And he's, he's still, he's one of the greatest guys ever, I think. Um, you know, I, I didn't get to uh, be a part of the city as much when he was on, uh, on board, but uh, I think Randy has definitely earned that title as probably one of the best city managers that we've ever had. Um, so praise to you, sir. <clears throat> We have a lot of good things going on. I think uh, the fireworks, I think that was, a, you know, and I even uh, spitted something out on uh, Facebook about the fireworks. I think that was a day for history books. You know, a lot of people, you know, were complaining a little bit about the, the expense of the fireworks, but, you know, look what it brought. You know, IGA, even though this may be a little funny, it's still a sale. It's still tax revenue, tax dollars. Hmm. Supposedly that night they did a record sale ever since they've been there in alcohol sales. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, hey, a sale's a right. sale, right? It works. <laughs> um, Air Queen, they were packed. They had, uh, you know, they had, uh, you know, a, a great business going that night. I think they had some live music going on. Um, you know, I'm sure Subway did really well. The pool did a record number that night and made, you know, quite a bit of money. Uh, so the fireworks were amazing. I mean, so many people that have been in town for, you know, longer than I have got to experience fireworks like that. And, and now we get to do that, you know, the younger generation with our kids, which I think is really cool. Uh, the, you know, it's something also, he mentioned parks, the community gardens uh, coming up and, and getting bigger. Uh, Linda, if you don't mind, uh, how big is it and compared to other surrounding community gardens? It's three times bigger than any other community garden in the town. Okay. Great. And that's going to be on the old Westlake property, which is really going to be neat. I mean, it's right down the street from my house. I'll be uh, taking advantage of that. Um, you know, the pool. The pool was losing $40,000 a year a few years ago, three to four or five years ago. And now it's, it's profitable um, or breaking even right at. Uh, you know, that's, again, great help to all the, you know, Tecumseh kids that work there, uh, lifeguards, concession stands. Uh, you know, a lot of great kids come out to Tecumseh, and that's, that's a benefit to <coughs> the city as well. Um, the city employees do great. It's you know one of the things I hate seeing out there. But it's their job. They get paid good to do it. Is when you see a water main break and it's minus 20 and they're out there chiseling away at some ice and they've got ice in their beard and they almost look like Santa Claus or something or Jack Frost. Uh, you know the city couldn't move forward without the, the great city workers we got all the way from the side of the table to the guys that are out there cleaning those nasty pumps and things like that. So you know a big thank you to them. Um, but overall, you know, the, the thing that kind of drives me nuts as a pet peeve is people are so quick to jump to point out the negatives of our city. Uh, you know, whether it's, you know, a few years ago when the budget, you know, was doing real bad or the pool's losing 40 grand or you're spending money on fireworks or you don't repave roads, but we've repaved record amount of roads here in the past few years. Yep. You don't hear about it. You don't hear a word about it. You'll hear it from maybe the people who live on that one street, but you don't hear about it, you know, as a community as a whole or, or how beneficial the fireworks were. The pool did a turnaround or Randy's saving money on this contract and, and that and how he's getting grants left and right. I, I just, I wish some of the citizens would take a little bit more pride in their community. I'm not saying everybody because there are some really good citizens in this town that, that uh, work community garden, uh, the library, a lot of um, volunteer-based organizations uh, that makes us you know, community what it is. So, um, you know, a big thanks to everyone who does volunteer their time. Uh, you know, you don't always get the thanks you deserve, but as a whole, the community appreciates it. So um, with that being said, uh, thank you, everybody, employees, council, for all your guys' hard work. And uh, let's keep this ball rolling because, I mean, at the rate Randy's got us going, we got a, we got a, lot, a lot of good things coming in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Belenzi. Well, first and foremost, I'd like to thank the citizens for passing the tax levies, the street levy, fire levy, police levy, because without the citizens and their efforts to pass these levies, the city would probably not even be here. We was on the verge of fiscal watch, 
I believe it was in 15, uh, prior to me coming on to council. The, also in 15, uh, Mr. Lowry hit on it, the pool lost $40,000. The, uh, I was a proponent of shutting that pool down. The city could not afford losing that kind of money. And I think it lost money a couple of years prior to that. But then in 16, we had new management uh, being April uh, Lowry. I don't know what she did. I don't know how she did it, but she turned that pool around. It's made money every year. Uh, last year, it would have made more money but they had to spend some of that hard-earned money they got to, I think, to buy a heater, was it? Or, mm -hmm. or, or to replace one of the pool heaters because the kids don't like swimming in ice-cold water, and I don't blame them. Uh, you know, uh, Mike mentioned, you know, the, the uh, IGA did record sales. In fact, I heard they had sold out of all of their beer. Uh, <laughs> And uh, they left the, you know, uh, they had a dumpster and stuff up there for trash, I assume. But uh, it, it basically, it goes back to the citizens and their votes to pass these levies to put the city at over almost a million dollars in the bank. That's an awesome job. Along with that, the administration has done an awesome job. We give Mr. Bridge a budget every year he has yet, to my knowledge, spent everything he could in that budget. He is tighter than, I don't even know what would be tighter than Mr. Bridge when it comes to money. And, and it, isn't, he, it isn't his money, it's the taxpayer's money, but he thinks of it as his money and he just won't spend it unless it, he, he questions every purchase. And uh, I'm sure if he doesn't, then the finance director that we have now will. <laughs> the, uh, you know, it, it's just, uh, I look forward to moving the city forward. We've got a lot of things happening this year. We, uh, I believe we have a new cruiser we'll be ordering if it hasn't been ordered. Uh, is it coming or not? It, we are waiting for the new models. Waiting on the 20 models to come out, okay. Uh, as the chief said earlier, we have a new medic coming. And both of those we were paying cash for. I believe that's the first time in the history of this city they paid cash for anything. Because the previous councils, previous administrations, wanted to finance everything. And I don't, I've never been a proponent of going into debt when you can save your money and then buy it at some other point. We're getting ready to uh, move City Hall back downtown where it, I think it originally started back in the 1890s, I believe it was, 95. And uh, it'll be a more central location. I think it'll also help the citizens down, or the uh, businesses down, downtown for foot traffic. And uh, with, all, with that, I will turn it back over to, to Mr. Reynolds, our mayor. Thank you. Before I begin, I uh, just have a few things I typed up here, but I just want to say thank you so much uh, to the city workers. These are the people who you know, pave our streets. They protect us. They stop our houses from being burned down. They protect us from robbers or crooks or would-be criminals. Uh, they make sure our water's clean for us to drink, which is fantastic. And Mike brought it up and how we did one of the best ones to drink. Uh, these are the unsung heroes of any municipality. And you guys deserve a lot of the credit for what you do. So thank you so much. Uh, over the last eight years that I've been elected, and Mike as well, uh, we really had some dark spots. Uh, for council, you know, we had the option, we, or we, had, we faced the decision to either cut our police force in half and or be faced with a projected $195 in the bank. Uh, obviously, we are well past that today with the voters. They pass these levies, and it's our job to manage those levies that have been passed. Uh, some of the some things that we've done in the last you know years, we balanced our budget without adding any additional spending uh, <coughs> uh, in taxes uh, to our budget. Uh, we ended the franchise fee, saving citizens uh, seventy one thousand uh, dollars from their trash bills, which I think was a big thing that we had all talked about for years on end, and citizens wanted to be done. We restored uh, property rights by allowing certain home improvements to be exempt from fees and permits. Uh, 
Uh, we've cut the change of occupancy permit in half, which this allows small businesses to, to start off with having to visit the tax man first, making sure that all their paperwork is in order, which I think is fantastic. We gave food trucks a year permit so that they could sell their tacos whenever they wanted or whatever else they wanted to sell to their food vending trucks. And it kept and it put us on to the same calendar as the county and the state. So you weren't getting a license from the county for a year, from the state for a year, but you can only operate in New Carlisle for eight months. Uh, we uh, said that we, you know, we all got up here and we all talked about fiscal responsibility. And last year, we, when we went through our budgeting process, you know, we cut out fifty thousand dollars of what was projected to spend. Uh, and uh, Mr. Lindsay brought it up. You know, we've bought items in cash, meaning less tax dollars spent overall. Uh, so I'm, I'm very proud, you know, of our city. Uh, last year, you know, we fixed several city streets, which Howie mentioned, which I think is fantastic. And you know, this year it's it's about investments, and this is what you know we're we're here for. Uh, we're investing in the city. Our investments are very, very key. Our investments are a brand new police cruiser. We're also going to get a medic. We're getting a city building. You know, we're paving streets. We're talking about fixing the shelter house parking lot. I mean, these are the investments that we're doing. This is what the city is doing with your money. I know some people criticize, you know, the fireworks, and they said, you know, you're going to blow away ten thousand dollars up in smoke. Quite literally, is what the individual said. And, you know, and people loved it. People came out. And the, even the people who were the naysayers came out, which is what I love the best, especially, you know, people enjoyed it. It was fantastic. So I definitely want to you know, thank all the citizens of New Carlisle uh, for not only electing myself and these, these other fine fellows up here. I've enjoyed working with all of them. I've worked with Mr. Lowry the most at eight years and with the senior men up here. And we're the old guys, not, <laughs> not literally though, right? <laughs> Uh, so I really much enjoyed working with Mike over the last eight years, Mr. Shammy over the last year, Mr. Cook and Mr. Cobb over the last year as well, Mr. Lindsay, especially over the last three. You've definitely been someone that I uh, work with very closely and have a great relationship with, and I appreciate you very much. So I want to thank all the voters for electing me, electing all of us, for passing our levies, for keeping ourselves uh, in check and holding us to account when they need to. So I, I look forward to 2019, and let's make it the best we've ever had. So, thank you. Mr. Cook. I have one more thing. As you know, a lot of us older folks are kind of going down the pike. One of the old gentlemen of this city by the name of Carl Snyder, the viewing will be tomorrow night and the funeral will be on Wednesday. Mr. Snyder was kind of a cantankerous person. <laughs> he graced this room and many other council chambers with his presence. He had a mind of his own. If he agreed with you, fine. If he didn't, it was a battle. And I will say that Mr. Snyder and I had many, many battles. But I also will say that Mr. Snyder was on the... <coughs> Volunteer Fire Department for this city for many years. When that alarm sounded, it didn't matter what your thoughts were. If you were with Bud, you went in and fought the fire. There was no right, no left. There was one way to do it. That was to put it out and protect the lives and property of this city. The bad situation about this and us older folks passing on, it's a page in history. And another chapter of history is lost. It's on. Council, anything else? Mr. Lowry. Mr. Mayor, one more thing. Randy, sorry, I was trying to signal to you during the meeting. And oh, I'm sorry. She wasn't on the agenda, but I would like to see if the mayor or the city manager would introduce Ms. Burner. And maybe give her a chance to say uh, a couple words. Yes, Miss Burner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't think she I, I, I know why she's not on the agenda. <laughs> it's because of this. Well, you can still introduce her. <laughs> Miss Burner, would you like to introduce yourself and say a few words? Please. Okay. Hi, I'm Emily Burner. Um, <laughs> I took this position last January. Um, I am. I was born and raised here in New Carlisle. My mom. Uh, works for the city offices, Kathy, at the water department. Um, <clears throat> currently, I do not live here in New Carlisle. I live out of town, but um, I also am a teacher for Tecumseh Local. I have three children, and my husband, Josh, is the Clark County DARE officer. So we're busy with um, kids and sports and this. 
great. Thank you. I appreciate that. <clears throat> now I'm probably like way <laughs> <be red. laughs> Match my pants. You did fantastic. Thank you for sweating. Thank you. That's all I had to do. Thank you. <laughs> it's always nice to see someone's look on shock, like, what? I got to talk? I did not know I had to do this. I'm fine reading meeting. this, was, I have no problem Was with this that. pre designed not to have her name on there? I wasn't on it last year. It wasn't on it last year. Oh, okay. All right. So, no, no I'm good. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> does the distinguished county commissioner have anything to say? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm just here to admire the nine hundred and some thousand dollars that the city has, and also to hear about the Marks radios and so forth. The county's trying to do as much as they can to help all the other kids in the county. They really are. TCC is coming forward also. CIC, Community Improvement Corporation. I have somebody asked me a question about them, about will they do anything out in the western part of the county. They definitely will. We help fund them as well. That's where Hobbs it used to be working here at the city as well. And uh, so things, things are tough. There's also, real quick, I'll just tell you, we had a meeting today about the Upper Valley Mall. Everybody's heard that there's things going on there. It looks like it's going to happen. Still hasn't been on the bottom line. But they're going to put $56 million in this project. It's going to be an entertainment. And athletic compound is what it will be. So there's a lot of things coming. There's over 400 some jobs working there coming into the county again. It's going to help Northwestern out big time, school district we're talking about. So there's a lot of good things happening in the county, as well as the city of Newport Island, citizen of Newport Island. I was here on this council for a number of years, enjoyed my time here. I think. Again, everybody's doing a good job up there. Thank you so much for what you're doing and helping this city go forward, and as well as the council. Thank you all for all your hard work. And the county knows that you're here, believe me. That's why I tell all the time our meetings. We have a meeting every Wednesday, so Wednesday morning. I'll let everybody know that there is a Western Park County. Thank you for letting me say so. Mr. Lindsay. The, uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner, for uh, giving us that uh, little bit of an update there on what's happening with the mall and other things in the county. The, uh, I wanted to go back to something that uh, Mr. Lowry was talking about earlier, and it's the pool. And I wish that his wife, April, would have been here tonight. So we could have told her personally during this time our gratitude from this council, I'm sure everybody up here agrees with me, that she has done a great, fantastic job on this pool. The, uh, she is doing things over there. I, I believe they have a swim team now. Uh, I think it's called the Mighty Ducks or something. The Mighty Ducks. A, it was a, last year was the, the first year ever that pool had a swim team. Okay, they do swim meets up there, which brings people into the city, benefits the restaurants and things. The one thing that, that uh, Mr. Lowry always shy away from, and I've noticed that when it comes to that pool, he won't tell people what the pool, type of money the pool's made. During the fireworks last year, we spent $7,000 on fireworks. The pool alone brought in, I believe it was a little over $5,000, I believe is what his wife told me. I think it was over four. A little over. I, I oh, may be I, wrong, but well, I thought she but either way, either way, it was a record yeah. day for the. the you know, it was open. Uh, they made all kinds of money that day, off of a seven thousand dollar investment. We got five thousand of it back, even though it doesn't go back into the general fund. It kind of stays in the pool fund for things they need and upgrades and and uh, they're also doing upgrades to the pool uh, this year. The they have some lighting upgrades. They are doing things in the restrooms and stuff. And it's things like that that's going on that Mr. Lowry knows about, but he won't, he won't say anything because I don't know why. <laughs> I guess because he says it's April's domain. <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to, to let everybody know that, that April's doing a great job with this pool. And uh, I think I wish her continued success with it. That's it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>
earlier, I neglected to mention all of these fine folks over here, except for the manager, Mr. Kitko, Mr. Uh, <clears throat> Miss, it's Miss Watson, Chief and Deputy Allender. Those those four people does a fantastic job uh, keeping things running in this city, keeping us in water and stuff, keeping the sewers going. The uh, the, the one question I get uh, from citizens is. How soft is the water here? Mr. Kitko tells me it's pretty soft. About 100, 180 milligrams per liter. I, I tend to disagree with him. We have some conversations on that because, you know, when I see iron build up or hardness on my shower doors, I'm thinking, how soft is this water? But uh, anyways, they, they do a good job. So I think we ought to give the administration and the citizens uh, from council a round of applause because without them, the citizens, we wouldn't, they wouldn't need us and we wouldn't need them. Mr. Lowry. I'm done, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Lowry. Good thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I make a motion we adjourn. Second. We are adjourned. <laughs>